and we are live Sunday night with those guys and Sunday night with those guys is sponsored by those guys. What's up? What's up? What's up, everyone? Oh, shoot. I forgot to mute it. There we go. Sorry about that. How are you? And what's going on, Paul? What's going on, Herman? I'm, I'm putting some double-sided tape on my um, goggles here. So if you keep seeing me lean. What, are huh? they sliding off your forehead or what? No, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. The module. Here and a little Velcro on the goggles and just stick it on. It's, it oh. is Velcro, but in the heat, for some reason, this Velcro, the tape is sticking, but the felt is coming off of the oh, Velcro. Man. I don't, I don't think he meant like, that he wanted to put one side on his head and the other side on the goggles. Bro. Yeah. No, no, no. That's what Herman and I were thinking. We thought you were nah. coming up with a novel new idea. No, I actually thought he was uh, just trying to hook something up on no, it. See the felt right here? Yeah. No, I, I got back. what you meant. And well, the problem is, Hadley, in your video, Hadley watched your video, Herman. Mm -hmm. And he said, he asked me immediately, like, yo, dude, what's up with your, your long-range antenna pointing straight ahead? Mm -hmm. And I was explaining <laughs> to him that while filming, the, the shit fell. This mm -hmm. module here that sticks on like this, wait uh -huh. here. this module here that sticks on right here had fell off because of that Velcro issue. Uh -huh. So now I'm put double-sided tape on. And I'm putting her back on, and she should be good to go. Is it Velcro? Only, it only comes off in the extreme heat, like like 90 plus. You got to get the, the good Velcro. The 3M Velcro. What's well, not Hadley? even so much 3M, like JSK? this heavy-duty Velcro here, right, that I have. This stuff here, you gave me some. Yeah. To it, put the it, strobe. It locks to, in. To put the strobe on the um the strobe on your drone. Yeah, on, on the drone. Yes, yes. This is that super velcro. But it's not it's not thick enough. I would have to use both pieces, and I'm being cheap with this velcro because it's hard to get the one you gave me. Well, they got it on Amazon. Well, it's good now. See, I can jump up and down. And it won't come off. So put it on your head. Let's see. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Okay. Jump up. Uh, here we go. Uh, all right. So let me. Hey, Lynn, what's up? What's up, Lynn? JSK. Uh, now, now jump up uh, and down uh, and see if it'll. No. That's moving your head. You said you could jump up and down. And... I'm not doing that, man. I'm not jumping. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. Let it go. <laughs> anyway, oh, how are you? Um, what's up, JSK Hadley? I know is listening in the cut. Click that like button early so you don't have to do it later. Anyway, oh, you could do it in on the way in or on the way out, but if you do it on the way in, don't do it on the way out. Huh? Click the like button. You could do it on the way in oh. or on the way out, but if oh, you yeah, do it on the yeah. way in, don't do it on the way out. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I just, either... I just got a call from Roger, and he's trying to find you on YouTube, and he cannot find Novice Quads. Because I got him blocked. Oh. No, I stopped. I stopped. I know. I did. <laughs> it's on. It's on. No, I don't. <laughs> or no, I don't. What's up, Drone Worship? The YouTube bully v vigilante has arrived. Hello, gentlemen. How is your day going? Um, my day was going Okay, I went, I went Where to go it? fly FPV this morning, me and Justin, and we went to the park, and there was a guy setting up with his helicopter. So Justin and I, Tim Jackson, how Dude. are you? Top of the morning to you over there in Australia, because I know you it's morning time, Monday morning, hey, and Timmy. you're on your way to work. You mean you mean a real um, RC helicopter, the single? Prop. Yes, a five foot gas powered RC helicopter. Yeah. One of those. One of those two, three to five thousand dollar joints. Right. Okay. You getting one well, of those? Huh? You getting one? Hell no. Well, this guy was in the park flying it, and we, they have, a, we were in Calvert Vox because they have an AMA field there. Right. So right. we're not AMA members, and so we we didn't go to the AMA field. The park is big enough for the AMA members to fly and for us to fly. So his buddy pulls up with a um, with an FPV bird. 
and he has a seven inch long range bird and this guy he came over he flew he hovered by us looked at us and flew away and then Justin and I burnt the battery. I guess he came to look and see what we were doing. He didn't get a notification that you guys had started. Make sure that you're subscribed and have that bell click. Sometime YouTube undoes that. But anyway, he set up a ground station. So we were getting, um, we were getting interference from his ground station because that's basically a module with antennas that floods the area but you, you've seen ground stations before you know what they are right. but those of you who don't know what ground stations are you can as a professional drone pilot you can have a ground station built for your dji drone or your fpv drone and when you're flying professionally it's good to have a ground station because that will blast your signal in a radius <laughs> in an area that you need to fly so if other people are flying by, they will not interfere with your VTX and, and, and interfere with, with the signals coming from your drone. But to make a long story short, we, we came to the conclusion, dude did it to be an asshole. Because after he set up the tripod with the antenna on it, mm -hmm. we started getting mad interference. And what he was doing was, um, Hadley had mentioned, he was maybe pushing two watts on his VTX. Because if he flew behind us and he was in he was on the other side we would get interference yeah. because that's his signal going through ours because he's behind behind us of course but we got a little we we got a few packs and we just said to hell with it let's just go home i only got three clips of footage where usually i get about 10 7 to 10 clips so it was all right Ideally, the ground station is designed for very precise mo movements. A lot of people use them for mission planner. Yeah, like if you are running your drone autonomously, you might want a ground station, you know, if you're following waypoints. There, there's a number of reasons you could use it. Use it. What's up, Sean? You know the invite sitting there, man. Um, yeah, Sean. Tonight's topic is why do you fly drones? And, and the reason I wanted to to touch on that is because there's a lot of people out there that own drones and 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 I don't know what they're what's up Chris Hope I don't know what they're doing with them they're they're, they're collecting dust what's um, up, Chris? Well, what you need is, is collecting dust is a hard case <coughs> that, that hard case keep the dust off yeah it's all right Paul this is true but I wanted to know Paul. I, I was I told Herman I was going to ask him, and it's it, it's simple question: Why do you fly drones? And and basically, the reason I'm asking is because mo a lot of people have different answers. Well, the the uh, initial uh, attraction to flying period was was when I was a young lad. I always want I always loved wanted to be a pilot. And I grew up during the Vietnam era, and I did not qualify for flight school of either fixed or helicopter. I really wanted a helicopter because they were really strict then. They didn't take you unless you were perfectly height, weight, and I was always the husky kid, you know? Mm -hmm. So right. then when they came out, I started out in 1989 flying uh, the bigger copters like you talk about, the gas ones. And uh, found that, you know, back in those days, there was no GPS. There was no accelerometers. There wasn't anything to hold it stable. You flew it by the seat of your pants. <laughs> and after, after uh, learning a lot and crashing a little, I decided this isn't for me because they were, you had to almost manufacture your own parts for the body parts and stuff. I said, that's not it. So then when they, it, it, uh, it evolved so that you had a controller that was linked. Cause I was using a Fataba four channel controller to run my helicopter. And uh, once it evolved, I got back into it and I just love the flight. I love, you know, we spend our whole lifetime running around on the ground. The, the views and that we get besides the views and opinions, but we get <laughs> is just spectacular. It's, it's not what we're used to. It's, a different perspective altogether. Well, that, that that's that's understandable. I I 
personally started flying drones because I've always been into back in the day, we came up at a time where we built models. We built model, then you got into model cars that actually had moving parts. Um, we have, I come from the era with planes. I also come from an era when I went to school, it was required for you to have a shop class. And that shop <laughs> class is usually some type of trade or something that might get you interested in the direction you want to go in life. You know, you had wood shop and wood shop, you built planes and you built planes and, and, and strange sh shape stuff. And, and in metal shop, you made rings and, and did other kinds of weird things. So for me, flying a drone, I come back from the helicopters. You remember the, you go in the mall and you see the yep. little helicopter, little bullshit helicopter, and they were yep. selling for like 50 or $60. And it really wasn't worth no more than about 12. Yeah. Well, I started collecting those. And then I got into the big one. They they had, you know, they have the big one up there for like for like ninety dollars or whatever the hell they're asking yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. I think it was the three, the two and a half foot one. I took that sucker up one time. It said we crashed. I never flew that shit again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So, but my little ones I loved because I could fly them in the house, you know, line of sight and stuff. And then I started finding out about drones and, and seeing drones pop up. And I'm like, wow. I saw a DJI commercial and almost went ape shit. <coughs> <laughs> I, I lost it after that. I'm like, that's perfect. A flying camera. And I've I've always been in the cameras. My uncle tried to teach me. It was a, he was a um, photojournalist, mm -hmm. and he tried to teach me how to use a thirty-five millimeter, how to develop film. And I wasn't trying to hear it. And he even gave me an old thirty-five millimeter that I came to realize, had I held on to that thing, it would probably be worth a lot of money in a case somewhere. And now, look at me. I'm 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 using drones with cameras flying cameras yep you know but everyone has a different purpose for flying i like technology the oh fact yeah i've always been that way too what's the latest and greatest well that's why i keep buying and, and up buying and selling and up buying and selling um just for the experience and to see what the new technology would do i can't show that one drone worship <laughs> no he, he just mentioned something he, he 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 used to do before before um before flying drones <laughs> probably worth a chunk now yes you're right because this 35 millimeter camera in order they started making them so that you could screw the lens on but in order to put a lens on this one you had to slide a latch here, twist it semi this way, press in and twist another way, and then the lens would pop off. Yeah. You know, when I say 35 millimeter, they they were old 35 millimeters because you remember the ones that used to have the little leather on the sides? Yeah. He, he had one of those. And come to find out the ones with leather on them were more valuable because they had leather. Most cameras, they didn't put leather on. It was a hard plastic. Well, after a while, they started doing a lot of um, weatherproof into the bodies of those camels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's that. Yeah, cameras. <laughs> yeah, they they started doing a lot of things to the bodies to stop water from getting in in, in your film. Hey, what's up, Roger? Hey, Lynn says, "How's the foot, Herman?" Well, it's here. <laughs> Where is it going to go? <laughs> Give me a second. I'll be right back. Can't do much with it. But hey, that, recovery one. That's a that's a real interesting question because I thought I've answered this question a uh, hundred times, and I, I answered. I think Valid asked this question: Why? Why do? Why do I fly drones? I don't know. Because he likes it. I don't know. <laughs> no, but um, I don't know. When I was in, uh, when I went to school, I was an art major in school. So I had to do the, uh, you know, I did sculptures and 
painting, drawing, stuff like that. And um, photography was one of the classes in your uh, your long list of art classes that you had to take. And I kind of took a liking to the camera. You know, back then it was 35 millimeter film, black and white, loading canisters and and stuff like that. And I don't know, it was it was fun. Um, when I went on to, to uh, further in school, I took some more classes in it. You know, it was like I said, it was 35 millimeter film, but I, I it was the school I actually wanted to go to was going to put me into uh, like doing like tough stuff for television and stuff like that. And I didn't get to go to that school. So I end up going where I went and that, that was that. But um, to make a long story short, when I had gotten hurt, you know, I had told you, you know, seven years ago, it was, yeah, about, it was probably about eight years now, when I had gotten hurt, I was uh, in the gym and stuff like that, and I couldn't train anymore. So I was just home doing that and nothing and, and going, you know, I, was, I started coaching high school football. And um, one Christmas, my little guy was like, yeah, yeah he wanted a, a drone with a camera on it. And I had always saw these things and wanted one, but I thought they were expensive. So I was like, shoot, you want a drone? I want a drone. So I happened to have gotten some uh, gift uh, cards from uh, Best Buy. And because I had bought phones, you know, for the family that Christmas, and they were giving out these gift cards for $200 for each phone and stuff like that. So I was like, wow, I had the gift cards and I was going through Best Buy and I saw the drone in the case and I was like, hmm, I got these gift checks. <laughs> And I got this credit card, let's do it. And I did it and I can't put it down. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just, I just can't put it down. And I, you know, I've watched a lot of guys on YouTube and started to learn more about the drone and, and stuff like that. And uh, the ins and outs and the, what you can and cannot do and what you should not do. There's a difference between what you can't do and what you shouldn't do. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, like I said, I just, with that, I just got into the whole thing and it started to go one step after another. And next thing you know, we got down to what we call uh, having to register these Recovery drones. One wants to know what position you coach. Defensive lineman. The big boys. In fact, he has a ring. Show me a ring there. Herman. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh yeah. For those of you who don't know, Herman's team won for the second year in a row. So it was it was a repeat. They're waiting for the second ring. And this is the first time. What is that history about Erasmus High School, Herman? Oh, there's no team in high school in New York City history that has ever pitched a shutout through the postseason. Yep. That's a hell of a stat. <laughs> it is. It is. And and to witness it all, there sat in the stands, Lawrence and his daughter. Yeah, Herman yeah. We, Herman gave us some tickets at Yankee yep. Stadium. I remember. Yep. I, I just wish the front the cell service would have been better in that giant stadium. Well, he, everyone he, says he coaches high school and college DBs. Okay. All right, all right, all right. See? That's what's up. See? See? <laughs> well, Where you at? if it wasn't for COVID, they might have been going for a three-peat. Well, I'm still waiting to see what's going on. Yeah. As soon as the doctor says it's a go, I'm going. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, like I said, I, I've, I've watched the videos. I've gotten to like a few of the guys, you know, on, on – uh, and even got to meet a lot of guys on, on, on YouTube. So as far as uh, the drone is concerned, it's like that one bit piece of freedom that you have when you got that thing in the air 
and you, you, you're doing what you want to do for that split second or for that 27 minutes of battery time. Or for money. Well, it's, you <laughs> well know, I was flying before. I right, was, still before money, I was flying. Before money, I enjoyed flying, and I still do. Because the first time I, I saw one of these things operate, I told you I was going to um, I was going to purchase a remote control car, RC car, and um, I parked the car and I was coming across the street. This guy comes out of the store and he puts this thing down on the ground and he takes off with it, and I see this thing fly up over the building and I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> What is that? And when he told me what and how much, and I was like, well, I'm going to go inside here and get this car. <laughs> and when I had the opportunity to get one, I, I got one. And, you know, believe it or not. All right, drone worship. Be good. Later, drone worship. Later, man. <laughs> anyway. You know, and like I said, I, I you know, I had always done. Uh, did the cameras when I was in uh, in college and a little bit in high school, but um, I had to put those things down until you know I had to I had to go pay I had to pay bills, so you know I did what I know, and um, I ended up back in school doing you know you know what I do, right? I'm an electrician, so yeah, yeah. At least that's what I was doing before uh, before the job tried to kill me. Anyway, the real the, the real deal is I, I, I wanted to, to talk about something, but I've, I've decided to keep choose my words wisely because <laughs> it's just that, that this drone community out here is, I mean, I thought, agreed, I thought it was mm -hmm. a community, like, like, you know, you have tree huggers, they all sit around and sing kumbaya and hug trees and, you know, and it's FPV and, and camera is like that. It's always somebody mad at someone or somebody's pissed off that somebody flew someplace before someone did or that person didn't call them to come fly. You, you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. a, a drone, to me, drone, I'm starting to see drone pilots. A lot of them are, are like women. Uh oh. No, no offense. No offense, Lynn. Nothing personal. I mean, in, in their mannerisms. Like, oh, did you see, dude? He, 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 he used four batteries today. So freaking what? He used four batteries today. You're mad? Why are you mad? Because you have two batteries? You, you understand? I mean, that, that, that's pretty much how I feel. And, and on all these Facebook groups, I'm going to tell you a story about a social media site that is no, well, it is still in existence, but they've changed their whole format. You guys remember MySpace? <laughs> Joe Mership says he's been trying to say it for the last two years. You remember MySpace, right? Well, MySpace was you were supposed to get on and have your space and invite your friends into your space and have fun. Facebook was the same thing. Invite people over into your world, meet with old friends, blah, 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 blah. Well, eventually, MySpace got to the point where they started getting political. And depending on who was running for office that year, that's who they went after, depending on who sent money into MySpace to pay their advertisements. Because back then, it was legal to do that kind of stuff. So <laughs> now... Facebook is turning exactly into MySpace. And what I mean by that, Lawrence, people are bitching with each other. You got internet gangsters and thugs. You have people cursing people out. Whereas if they saw the per other person in the street, they would probably walk across the street. And it's not just backstabbing drone worship. It's, it's you're doing a lot of bitch shit on Facebook. And, and MySpace was the same way. Mm -hmm. And everyone thought MySpace would be around forever. Well, guess what? They're still there, but you don't even know about them. 
Okay, you can type in myspace.com. They have a site. They have windows, and you can add friends and do all of that shit like they used to. But who the hell's on MySpace? Everyone's on Facebook, Instagram, and and um, TikTok. Flip-flop? <laughs> yeah, flip-flop. <laughs> flip-flop. A lot of people on that one, Paul? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Oh, I didn't see. I didn't see the message that was deleted. I was so mad because I had stock in MySpace and it should have gone up with Facebook. Well, you want to know what Zuckerberg is sitting at the top now, like Tom was. You remember, you always had that one person, Tom, who was supposed to be the owner of um of uh, MySpace. Well, a smile in your face. <laughs> what happened? Waste of time. What happened? Um, I'm looking at a message. Where? Has timed timed you out, Paul? Yeah. How are you? How are you timed out for? I don't understand that. So basically, you cannot type in the box because he timed you out. Who? Um. So I'm looking at this recovering. Recovery One drone was timed out by Paul Murray for 300 seconds. So I looked up ahead, up top, to see what happened. Message deleted by Paul Murray. Let me see view deleted message. Uh, the stuff like, okay, all right. He had, he had a good enough reason to remove it. <laughs> okay, I, I I understand what's going on, but that's neither here nor there. And and what's up, Bill? Bill, What's how good? are you, Bill? And and <clears throat> my my main thing that I'm getting at is this social media stuff is getting played. This is my second time going through all of this crap. You understand what I'm saying? The yeah. thing with oh, he got kicked out of this group because he hangs with that dude, and that dude flies with with him. So I'm not talking to Paul, and and then. Paul has 12 batteries and I only have three, so he sucks anyway. You know, all of that shit on Facebook. Come on, man. So basically what you're saying, it should just be one big Facebook group called One Up Drones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because everyone is always trying to get that first shot. They're trying to get that first flight. You remember, Herman? Yeah, there was like, a time we were, But hold on. You remember there was a time we were flying with everybody, right? And then all of a sudden we'd be like, yo, where are we flying? And then it came to the point where people were asking us where we're going. Well, they stopped. No, but they stopped searching for places to fly. And we're always like, Herman, Lawrence, where are you guys flying? Well, I I, you guys are flying somewhere cool. Well, what I understand is this. I understand the human nature to want exactly. to have something that is different from someone else. And the only way to do that is to be the, the first guy to do it or the first guy to try it or to get that perspective of it. You know, and I, I understand that. But the, the problem with it is that it has gotten to the point where <laughs> it's made people ugly. You know, it's like a pit full of dogs and whichever one comes out, comes out. But what I don't... but. I, I understand what you're saying, Herman, but I, I I have to stop using the word but. I have people on Facebook that don't talk to me because I don't call them every time I go fly. I have people that don't talk to me on Facebook because I just stop flying with them all together. I have people that don't talk to me on Facebook because, but they lurk. There's a lot of lurkers because they felt I abandoned them. <laughs> and a Chris Hope, <laughs> you abandoned them. Yeah, so I, I mean, that's a bunch of grown people, man, acting like kids. So you wanted street. them, huh? You wanted them. What? Oh, <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> he lost me for a second. I just caught on, but my whole my whole point is, it's too much garbage and bull going on in all these groups people are creating groups not to um not to have a group and and have a camaraderie and, and a friendship amongst people and to do things people are creating groups to spite other groups 
people are creating groups to steal another group's friends, subscribers, or whatever. People are creating groups to take news from other groups. People are creating groups to spread false hope and, and, and dreams to people out there just because they can do it. Then people are creating, <laughs> hey man, not every group has this shit. That's true. Joe Mack, how are you from Ireland? How are you, mate? That is true, Hadley, not every group. And, and I must specify not every group, but, and there are a lot of groups out there that are just there to, to exploit others. And with that, I'll, 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 I'll kind of leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what, what is there to say about it? Oh, wow. except, except let it keep happening and, and, and ignore it <laughs> and watch people. You're having an epiphany. I had two years ago once. Dude, drone worship, I was feeling like this when someone asked me to become a moderator to a group. Do you know I'm in Facebook groups that I didn't even know I was a damn moderator in? How the hell do you make someone a moderator and 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 don't tell them? Mm -hmm. That don't make no damn sense. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you are too, Herman. That's why Paul, you don't you don't do the Facebook thing, right? No, no. You're just you, you're just you, on you, it. Paul? You, you, you should. It's just well, like Sean. I, I Sean, I, I sent you an invite to come in. What's what's up, me as drone? Paul. Well, well, you ever see like those parents that say to those other parents that have one kid, you're not a real parent because if anything goes wrong, you know exactly what happened. <laughs> but those those parents that got multiple kids, now nah, they got to be investigators. Because none of the kids give each other up. <laughs> well, you're not a real you're not a real drone pilot. So you've been in a couple of Facebook groups. I mean, what is it? And, and this goes to <laughs> you guys in the chat. What this goes to all of you guys in the chat that fly drones. Why do you fly for fun? Are you doing it because your boy on the blocks doing it? You're doing it for money. You're doing it. Well, for, for health reasons, I, I, it is therapeutic. Right. Well, like I said, you know, when I first started doing it, it was to get out of the house, you know, to have something to do. Um, it was, and, and I took an immediate liking to it. It was the, the, the thrill of having this thing off the ground and it's actually not crashing, you know, as, you know, you know, the P3 standard, that whole Addy mode thing, it, I had to learn the difference between the, you know, the Addy mode and the, um, and the P mode. Right. It's not the same as it, as it is on the other controller. Right. I'm seeing so, people. If you look at the whole setup for the three standard to all the other threes, uh -huh. the Advance and the Pro, totally different setup with the controller. Okay. I, I I hadn't noticed that, but I, yeah, I that, that's on the toggles and it's not on the, on the, it's not on the screen. Work, people people are putting down. They fly for work, um. Hundred percent, and Sean says a hundred percent fun and fresh air to capture unique angles of buildings. Mia says I fly because fascinated by them a few years ago and always wanted one. Right. It's a great excuse for me to be outdoors. I I agree with you. And coast to coast, I love drones. I love tech. I love the release. You know what it, it is? A lot of, it causes a lot of arguments, too. This is true. But you, it, <laughs> you know what? You know what? You remember your first <laughs> drone, drone, drone flight, Paul? Yeah. Your yeah. first two drone flight, you remember the adrenaline was flowing in your body and you was yeah. all all amped up like you had a shot of double espresso and yep. then it took off and you forgot to breathe and then you go. <sighs> and and it didn't crash? Huh? And it didn't crash? Right. And it didn't crash. It hovered like it was supposed to, you know, and, and I hate to say this, but 
I started out with Hubson drones and that's how I wind up finding out about drone worship. He was in the Hubson drones back then. So I used to watch a lot of his videos, but I can honestly tell you since I stopped flying Hubson drones, I stopped having minor strokes and or heart attacks because <laughs> if you didn't calibrate that damn thing, right. It would do the toilet bowl effect. If you didn't, if you didn't, um, do something right with those Hubsons, or they, you would have flyaways and all kinds of weird stuff. Now they were fine if you calibrated it right and they caught enough satellites and stuff. I, I, I've had fun. I still have. Well, I don't have the drone. Oh shit! I threw the drone out and I still have the controller. I still have the H five hundred one S advanced controller. It was a big controller with the screen in the middle, the patch antenna, and all of that. But. You threw a drone out? Yeah. Without a proper burial? Yeah. I wifey wow. was on this cleaning thing and and it was just all right, you gotta go. You gotta go. You wow. gotta go. Now now I wouldn't throw away nothing. I I'll strip I'd strip it down to look at the motors. <laughs> I don't care about nothing else. I will strip it down to look at the <laughs> motors. <laughs> JSK says for fun, I always love them pictures now. I can take aerial pictures. Now it's a retirement hobby. On their way back to China, goodbye, Hubson products. Have a good flight. It's true. It, I mean, they did come out with a 4K camera, the Xeno drone. Everyone saw them come out with it. Well, the reason that so many people brought them mm -hmm. was because the drone was shot in 4K, simulated 30 frames per second, but they claimed 30 frames per second. And it had a range of, I think, a mile and a half to two miles. And it actually worked. And But no one was buying them until they lowered the price down to 200 and change. Then everybody and their mother started buying them. <laughs> What's up, Justin? What's going on? Hey, Justin. I, I was telling him about our experience earlier with dude and, 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 and flying and hovering in front of us. And... <laughs> and and being a real dick about it from the AA, AMA field. But life goes on. I'm going to get up tomorrow morning. It's Monday. And I'm going to go somewhere and I'm going to fly and I'm going to get a little bit of footage. Glad I was able to reach you guys. Everything you know, to teach you guys everything you know, you need to know about FPV. Well, this is true. I give you props, Hadley. Had, if it wasn't for Hadley Herman. I might still not be flying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seriously, because because there were people here in New York I, I, I went to and and you hear this in FPV. And as soon as you say you're interested in learning how to FPV, how to fly FPV, you're going to hear this from at least five people. I can guarantee it. If you have any problems, call me. If you have any questions, Call me, <laughs> <laughs> right, Justin? Yeah. Well, you always get that from people, and um, sometimes they had a time to help you. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they really just said it to make conversation, like that old saying, "Yo, what's up, man? I don't want you to tell me what's really going on with you. I'm just saying, what's up? And I'm passing by." <laughs> yeah yeah well <clears throat> all i can say is that the reason the if i just thought i would ask why do people fly drones i mean other than the obvious you can take pictures and stuff some people get an ex an adrenaline rush chris hope thank you much man highly appreciate it for the drone community thank i you. personally you, personally like tech and I've always been a sponge when it's come to tech and digital. Hey, Newfound Drone Productions, how are you? <laughs> when it's come to tech. So, you know, it's funny you say that. I think that's what really draws a lot of guys to this, you know. Like, you know me, I am I got collectibles and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I have the trains and the RC car. And, 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 and it's just, Dude. it's just that those things, it's just... I know what you're saying. I looked to the left. When I was a kid. I had the Star Trek joints and and all of that stuff, you know? 
So yeah. it was always that way. I always it, had it's the more technical stuff, you know. It's funny you say trains because I looked to the left and you remember I had the, the bamboo shelf up and yeah. I had a few train engines hanging off and, and a few mm -hmm. smaller drones and stuff. Well, I've never put these things back on the wall. So they've been sitting here. And I seriously, seriously, well, my chair went down. I seriously need to find a place to put them because I don't want to sit them in a box. Some of these are my more expensive engines. Mm -hmm. And some of them are, are custom jobs. Like this is, a, this is a broad. This is a factory one. But I have a couple of custom ones and stuff like that. And I've always been in the HO gauge. I have the larger but gauge. I had the Lionel. Now, I have a pre-World War II metal Lionel engine that my grandfather brought my uncles. And there were seven siblings, I think about four or five boys. Mm -hmm. And all of the boys played with this train set. When I was a little boy and was able to put the track together, I played with this train set, not knowing that Lionel train sets weren't too safe and you could probably electrocute yourself from the, from the controller. <laughs> but <Wow. clears throat> I just always thought, well, well, the leads, you know, he had to clip the leads onto the track. Right. I was, my grandfather, he probably did it as a fear factor, but he told me, don't ever touch more than one track at the same time. Don't ever do it. Well, that's the same the same, same case as landscape. Today. <laughs> Mike Drennan, how are how you? Are still you still can't do that. Yeah, I know. But a lot of people don't know that. Well, the subway track, yeah, you can't touch all three of you can't you can't touch all of the rails of the so you'll you'll short the uh the the, the connection, the bridge, you'll bridge the yeah, gap. because there's a there's a thing in the track that they use for reading the trains. Hadley says he flies for that moment where you feel like you're out of your body mm -hmm. think with the quad and, and it's true. You you do become the quad. Like when you're right. looking in the hood flying you're here but you're really out there. That's why I told yeah. you the first time when I put the goggles on to fly the Phantom and Xavier was like if you, if you never did it before be careful you can get dizzy. I'm like it's actually easier to fly the thing with the damn goggles on than using your tablet and line of sight going back and yeah. forth. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I do agree. Hold on a second. Let me run and get something. Where are we going? No, but that, that thrill that to get that thing up in the air and is doing what you wanted to do the way you wanted to do it yeah, for that for that twenty seven minutes, <laughs> <laughs> is that thrill? Okay, remember that Lionel engine I told you I had that was pre World War II. Uh huh. Well, this is it. It's a two six four, uh -huh. and, and people don't know, but this is all metal. Uh -huh. It's heavy as mother. The, the same one. This yeah. It's, I forget what model, it's a prairie something, but they made two versions. There was a pre-World War II you have and, and post-World War II. You have the coal car from behind Yes, it? I had the coal tender that goes, that goes with it. You also. have it? Yes, yes, okay. I still have. Wrapped up, yeah. <laughs> you got, you got the, the oil? The oil I don't have, but I do have, I, I haven't put, this was the one these were the ones that created smoke. Yeah. Remember you would put the oil drops inside and yeah. it would touch the motor and do, 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 do. you know, <laughs> it would choke you out in about a half hour because you'd put half a bottle in it by the time <laughs> you finished for the day playing with it. The whole house smelled like burning oil or burning hair grease. <laughs> didn't, they, didn't they also have um, like a boxcar and a caboose and all that stuff? Yeah. Yes, yes, but the but the special thing about this one is it's metal. Yep. They started making them with plastic. Okay. And those yeah, are those are all of the copies. Yep. It's yeah, 2026 Prairie. I forget. 
Well, you youngins got to remember that back when I had mine, everything was metal. And Herman, here was the reverse switch. <laughs> yep. It sure, was a reverse. This was, this was neutral. Then it was forward and reverse. Now, you know what I was going to tell you? I was looking up some of these things on eBay, and there's guys out there, and I'm looking at models from, like, the 90s that were produced in the 90s. <laughs> tell them how much. Selling <laughs> these things for a couple hundred dollars, and I'm saying to myself, wow. <laughs> I should back out some of these things from the uh. 60s. <laughs> that I got yeah. and from the early 70s. I have the Spirit of 76 edition. The Lionel. Right. Yeah. That was a special edition. And you want to know what? I could not get that because at the time, I didn't have any place to put it. And I wanted to have it because I actually had a layout in People Magazine many, many, many years ago. Maybe I was in my mid to early 20s mm -hmm. and did a layout in, in the magazine. They gave me a picture and they showed the board and, and stuff like that. It was nothing major. <laughs> Should I just recently, re, uh, you know, I recently bought the uh, the Evil Knievel stunt cycle and um, action figure with the replica Harley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had from the Ideal Toy Company, the original Evil Knievel, and I wish I had took care of it. I mean, maybe I, I wouldn't have kept it this long, but I didn't have it too long. I dogged that thing out, dude. I, poor Evil Knievel. It got to the point he wouldn't even sit on a bike no more. I was just sending the bike. <laughs> <laughs> he, he got to the point where he wouldn't sit on the bike. He, he couldn't stay on the bike no more. He got to the point because I was jumping that thing over planks of wood down the block, and back then, the cars were made of metal. So if it hit a car, guess what got damaged? The plastic or the metal? <laughs> but it had that shock in the front. It did. It did. And it did what it was supposed to. It protected the bike. But poor evil went through some shit. <laughs> hey, Justin. <clears throat> now, now, now it all comes to life where Wild Lawrence started. <laughs> started with the evil can evil dirt bike. <laughs> yes. Ah, you get it to jump over crates. What happened? You get to set up the crates and get it to jump over crates. Listen, evil went downstairs. <laughs> he went what? in walls. This dude oh, and, and you know what was cool? You remember? I him to jump 16 buses. He better make it over these four crates. <laughs> you remember the concrete barrels they used to have in parks? They used to have these giant concrete barrels. They look like... um almost like sewer um, tubes, but they used to have them in the parks in our neighborhood. So I would crank it's it up on an angle and try and make them do a loop-de-loop. Because -loop. Uh. if you got to a certain speed he and you stop, he would release and launch. So I would, the barrel would be like this long, mm -hmm. and I would go in on an angle like this on the side and try and get him to do the loop. So before I found out how many times I needed to crank it up, he would go halfway up and come straight down. He would go three quarters around and fall. But I, I got pretty good with it. I did get pretty good with that little thing. I still think some of the stuff we had back then was better than the stuff they got today. <laughs> I, I want to see the video of uh, <clears throat> Lawrence with his first hula hoop myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to see that. <laughs> I, I don't know if Lawrence ever had a hula hoop. Did you, Lawrence? Know? Nope. No. Nope. Uh, hey, here's the bigger question, Herman. Even if he had one, would he tell us? <laughs> I nope. wouldn't. Nope. <laughs> See, I wouldn't tell you. I was that. into the stuff hard. These Atlas engines for the price. It, it, these Atlas actually Atlas isn't even in business no more. This <laughs> engine back then was seventy five dollars. And we're talking we're talking um mid to early 80s the atlas engines were 75 dollars. i don't even you know what i'm gonna google that and see what an atlas engine costs now nowadays if if you can even if they still have them i i thought the company was out of business let's see let's see let's it go to might be. Well, you can see if guys got them on um h-o on uh what do you call it 
eBay. Atlas HO gauge trains. And that that's for those of you who don't know the the track size. Okay, Atlas Micro since 1913. Um they've been around since 1913. That's crazy. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, this is a memorial of someone. They went out they of still business. have them N scale. For those of you who don't know, you have the Lionel that's O scale. Um, the one that I just showed you right here, this is HO gauge. And then they have something called N scale. N scale bitty, bitty, is bitty. about the size of, an engine is about the size yeah. of this here. I've actually seen an N scale layout in a suitcase. You open a suitcase up and the trains and everything are inside and you can run them through a little mountain and everything in an attache case. But from what they say, what I see here, Atlas is only making N scale. That can't be true. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. HO gauge. Okay. They do have HO gauge. I'm trying to see what an engine would cost these days. You should see the cheap plastic they put on these things now. <laughs> I'm well, serious. I have, and I'm look. I was looking at what guys are asking for stuff that was produced in the '90s, and they're getting a pretty good penny for it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're 100 percent right, and and that's what I don't understand. Let's type in on eBay H H O gauge trains engines H O gauge. Yeah, it's, it's still a big market for them. Let's see, HO gauge trains. All right, now this guy is selling cars. We used to pay five dollars each for a box car or whatever type of car. It varied from from maybe like four dollars, yeah, four dollars to a, huh? dollars now. Right. This guy is selling some stuff, six box cars for um, pre-owned, of course, for $12.95. I'm trying to see. All right, this guy does, this guy has an engine, it's pre-owned, it probably doesn't work. <laughs> He's selling it for $9.99. Oh, I see why. why? These are the old, old plastic. Now there's a guy that has a page here, Athern Engines. Mm -hmm. He's selling these. This is another company that went out of business. He's selling one. It doesn't even say he's, he has four boxes here. One box is an engine, and it there's five cars. He's selling for $119. What gauge? HO gauge. So it's one engine and five cars, but from Athern, the company that is no more, in the original Athern boxes for $119. Oh, here it is. He's got pictures of them. Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> nah. One, two, three, four. It's not even an engine. It's five cars. It's six cars. That's a damn shame. Mario, buy it. <laughs> Dude. And I'm I'm pissed because I threw out boxes of box cars and shit. Hey Lawrence, oh, why man. didn't you ever move up to the the ones where they're like a mini bike and you ride them around in your backyard? <laughs> <laughs> so so someone could steal it out my backyard. <laughs> Pretty heavy. <laughs> someone can steal it out my backyard. You gotta you gotta drill the uh, track down to the ground. I don't know what, uh, the what what scale they are, but they're, uh, you know, like the engine would be like six or eight feet long and uh, oh two, no, two no. and a half feet and have wide. the little and, and have the little two yeah the little, little hat, hat. hat. Oh, you don't little. need a transformer for that you need you need a whole new power supply yeah <laughs> I'm I'm typing I'm in this engine here just to run the train set Alco C. Yeah, I always had the larger gauge. Or twenty. They call it large scale, I think. Don't they call it large scale? No, for eight oh three. Like the one they used to have at the mall for the around Christmas time. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. And Mark. the elves used to ride him around. All right, check <laughs> this out. The kids ride him around too at Christmas time <laughs> at the mall. Yeah. I just put in. Uh huh. The price 
of this engine right here. I'm trying to find the price of this. In, the, I'm trying to find the going rate for this engine right here. Mm -hmm. um, I have a guy sold for, it doesn't say what it sold for, of course. So that's the wrong one. Mm -hmm. um, they seem to be averaging between 95 and maybe about $115 for this engine right here. Mm -hmm. Roughly between 95 and 115, I spent 75 years ago. So that means I need to keep on to hold on to it for a lot longer. That's all. Hmm. You gonna make me go dig out stuff out? There. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, dude. Because my wife is. Uh, I got. I have a box. You know? Do you know the um paper boxes that you get your paper from for like Staples? That case, you mm -hmm. get reams of paper in. I have one of those boxes filled with engines. Just engines. I got rid of all my box cars and 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 containers and and I got all of it. Get rid of all the accessories and just kept the engines. And I have a box there and this box here with some of my best. How would you engines. get rid of the box cars? But I'm going to tell you something. Have you heard of Train Trainland or Train World? Mm -hmm. Okay. Me, train cool. right. Oh, no, Trainland. Train <laughs> What's that, Justin? There's one by me. It's still open. This is what I'm getting ready to say. The one by you is Train Land. It's the original store. I used to travel when I lived in Manhattan all the way out there to that one to buy engines from. Now they have Train World in Brooklyn somewhere. I don't know if that's still open. I have to find mm -hmm. out. But it's still there. On Train Land, they have We Buy and Sell Trains, right? I called this dude up and went in there with about five engines. You got, you got, you got plugs. And immediately he said, we don't buy, we don't buy and sell trains anymore. But if you want to donate them, I'll, I'll yeah, take okay. them and put them on a shelf. You know, I yeah, took my okay. shit. And, you know, I took my shit and walked out the store, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Hey, John Spizzo. John Spizzo, how are you, man? Long time no see. They don't. Hey, Paul. You're not, yeah. you're not, um, you're not keeping the time tonight, or is it, or, or we're not doing well, that tonight? I decided that we, Lawrence, see, Herman wants it every half hour. Lawrence wants it on the hour, so we're three minutes away from the hour, because oh, if you remember, uh, on Lawrence's uh, those guys, mm -hmm. he does a shot and a drop, and no. so four around of them holidays around the holidays maybe. Four of them a night, and Lawrence starts wobbling around with it. Right. Well, so I'm doing it right. on my show because of the summer. Yes. <laughs> the summertime, you know, you got to have a drink. Yes. Relax. So everybody mm -hmm. get your drinks ready. Three minutes, there's going to be a drop. And Lawrence I don't know, got, I don't know about, I don't know about no damn drop in a shot. <laughs> that, a that, drop. that I don't know about. I'm I'm having tea. You're having tea? That tea looks a little dark there, sir. <laughs> you know what happened? I left the tea bag in it too long. What kind it's of tea is it? What kind of tea is it? Lipton. <laughs> That's what everyone says. Lipton. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Herman. <laughs> you know what I'm you? Oh, it's Tetley. Now, where'd I find that? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, I thought you would say Earl of Grey or some shit. Because <laughs> no, then it wouldn't have been that dark. That's true. That is true. See, see, you know a little something about tea then. No, I know how to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't it be like shots? Then you go, then you drop. Well, Mia, no, only, no, on, see, only on New Year's drop. Eve. It's the drop. Only Mia. on New Year's Eve, Mia. <laughs> see, oh. look, the tea, ice tea, yeah. yeah. Now, had you told me there was some berry tea or something like that, I would have believed you. But... Ice tea. Okay. <sighs> One minute. What happened? Hold one on. Minute. One minute. One minute. Justin's got to go get his drink. One minute to your, your, your uh, drop, your, uh, what do you call it? 
and you pay homage to the sponsor. It is it is very dark recovery one. I ain't gonna say what it's called in what? my neighborhood. Ice tea? <laughs> yeah, if you wanna call it that. Well, I froze it, right? And then I poured Ow. more iced tea on the top of it when it started to um, freeze and I was drinking it. So it's, it's had ice in it. That's just the color of it. Okay. Well, you, you don't have to explain to me. I know. I won't. I'll, I'll have to catch a rebroadcast. Of what? The tea? No. Uh, they're, um, show, they've been showing Star Wars all weekend. Uh -huh. so oh, yeah, you were telling me. Doing yeah, all day I was watching, and they had it all day today. At 6 o'clock, they're showing Solo. Okay. The one. So it, it's mm -hmm. it's a make of, I guess, to, to show you how it's Han Solo. It's a Disney creation, I know. Right, how Han Solo and, and Cal Ridian, of who was, um, uh -huh. so what's uh -huh. his name? Um, the Cold 45 dude. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, how they 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 became friends in in the past mm -hmm. and kind of trust each other. Right, right. S supposedly. Okay, there we go. I got it. See Hadley, I, I'm using that little wrench joint you sent me, the ratchet joint. A Z drones is in the chat. What's up, A Z drone? How are you, sir? What's good, man? That brown juice, Global Drone said. <laughs> it ain't tea, it's brown juice. Well, and Lynn, Lynn is looking for uh, Lawrence and his little mini bottles. I don't have nothing, S.A. The liquor store is closed, Holmes. How is the liquor store closed? On Sunday. I know. I know. You got I ask, no, and what I, I do is, the one. and what I do is, like, tomorrow, I'm going to go there. And I'm going to say, because you were closed yesterday, I was forced to go to your competition. Well, I, I do it every Lynn, time. Yeah. Yeah. Lynn's talking about the, the white lightning you had, the flavored white lightning. Right? Oh, no. Yeah. No, you're talking moonshine. Moonshine, yeah. <laughs> oh, what's no. Up, I, I am. Hey, what's, what's up, up Steve? I am going to get some moonshine for the holidays, though. I've already you decided. You've got the glass up? What happened? Your liquor store has the, the heavy glass up there? Oh no! It, yeah, it does. I would, yeah, you know they better out here. <laughs> you better have that glass. <laughs> Picture. We're not in the south. Where you just walk over to the counter and give me a bottle where, of, and give me a bottle of gin. You remember those days when it didn't? The yes. fact that you got to go to Manhattan now. <laughs> I know. And even then, they scan. Oh, well, they probably well, scan you at the door have, for weapons. We still have. We still have some here in Brooklyn that you can walk in and walk around and pick up your stuff and take it to the counter. Okay. Just that all of the good stuff is behind the counter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean the stuff you can't steal? <laughs> no, no, no. The, the good the people, stuff. the stuff that the yeah, that's... the top shelf stuff is uh -huh. behind the counter. For those the bottom, of you bottom shelf and the middle shelf is all out on the floor. Wondering what I'm doing here. And wines. I'm changing an arm. This arm was broken. And it only took oh yeah, Paul, I forgot to tell you, they finally sent the replacement arms. Oh, good. And 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 before the twenty seventh, because today's yeah. the twenty sixth. I got it. I got them um this week. I got a text from a, a email from Bang You Good saying your package has been delivered in your mailbox i'm like they in china how they know what's in my mailbox so because of course it was a day later put it. of course it was a day later i went and checked and the arms were sitting in in the mailbox so now i can finally change the arm on this bird and and hey, tom what's good man? that will mean what's up tom how are you sir that will mean that everything in my fleet flies. Paul? Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, <laughs> You're Jack late. Life, uh, Steve's saying that uh, he's saying uh, he's speaking to you in the chat here. He's saying good seeing you. Yeah, because I said up, up above that, I says, Hey, Hello. Tom, how are you, man? What's going on? He was, he you was know replying. what, Roman? 
it would be nice to get Tom on here and talk with him. Okay. Yeah. And you have it, Tom's email address. And since and since have, what, what Lawrence is saying is, since he's got his hands full with four arms there, right. would you please send him an invite? That'd be nice if I had his his email. Oh, okay. No, I'm talking about have you we we have him on a future live stream. If you're down the come on, Tom. And and let us know what's happening in your world of drones and and stuff like that. We always we always welcome people to come on. Even you, Stevie, capture life. I did want to have send send you an invite. Um, I'm going to Facebook right now, and I'll do that. Who? To Tom. Okay. It says send him an invite. Well, you're gonna send it to a messenger. Oh. You have to download the Zoom. He probably has the Zoom app already. Well, it automatically downloads too. Yeah. Sony clicks right. it. Half of America has it already. Let's go to. Now, I know Tom and I are not friends, but I see him, Tom Dowling. You're not Tom's friend on, um, on Facebook? Well, I am now. <laughs> I'm requesting uh... that I'm going to you. You know what it is? I was at a stage where okay. I wasn't accepting any friends mm. on Facebook because I heard they... that about you, Lawrence. <laughs> you know what? Facebook, I you know, is another Facebook, one of those things. Facebook, no, Facebook will make you make you say things you don't want to say. <laughs> you know, yeah, but it's people. it's just like YouTube. Like I was telling you, in a sense, it's just one dopey ass machine just running this shit. Oh, see, it says we're already friends. See? No, no. Because it said no, it says friend request sent. You know I have more than one account, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you would right. think that when you put in this information to set up your account and shit, right? The dopey ass YouTube, or, or not YouTube, but uh Facebook would realize that yeah, that dude is using the same information on both accounts. Could be him. Yeah. Keeps asking me to be friends with myself. Right. You know, that's a little weird. I mean, you know, I was already friends with myself as a kid. I don't want to be friends with myself as an adult. Now, you know what? It was interesting to find out that that engine was 95 to 100 and change. I don't because I need to go, I need to pull out my engines and go through them and, and see what's what. Well, yeah, because you know you've got to start buying. Now that you're flying, because wild God, land God, you are, because you, God forbid I die, Paul. Well, they're just no, throwing all that shit well, out. Well, yeah, but also since you're a wild man flyer, that uh, Herman has seen you fly, you're gonna need a lot more parts. You need to get that money, you know. <laughs> so they're just gonna throw it all out, Lawrence. Yeah. Huh? So they're yeah, gonna throw it all I, out. Hey, Diane, when I die, what are you doing with all the trains and drones? Throwing them out, right? She says she's selling them. <laughs> yeah, she's listening to the conversation now. Penny's, Penny's on the dollar. She, yeah, Some right. Be outside salivating. Hold on, let me go get my car. I'm gonna take all of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Huh? You can have everything. You can have everything in that right. box for a dollar. <laughs> oh, she said she would do a giveaway for my friends. There you oh, go. Oh God, no. Oh. Oh God, no! That would hurt my heart. <laughs> That's funny. I'm visiting the house. <laughs> All I have to—I actually believe it or not, Herman. I left special instructions with my nephew. He knows where my password book is, so I told him if anything happens to me, get on social media, contact Herman, and or one or two other people, and 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 handle it handle it that way you know so oh, your massive yard sale recovery one says oh God. see you know what <laughs> they wouldn't have a yard sale they, because they don't know the value of the stuff it's called curbside pickup take what there you, you want. go there you go take paul. what you want <laughs> there you go paul <laughs> we got a curb just come pick that shit up yep <laughs> uh, i pray that they don't I could see the metal engine there. Oh, this piece of crap. 
<laughs> oh, that's that's old stuff. Yeah, that's old hey, stuff. Here we go. Here we go. Here's Tom. As a kid, you have an imagination. You learn how to build things, and you hang out with yourself. You're sideways, Tom. There oh, you there go. you go. There What's you go. Good, Everyone, well, he sees audio still connecting. There we go. What's up, there you go. Hey, what's, what's up, on? Tom? How are you, man? What's going on, Good. dude? I see everyone that doesn't know you. Tom is Tom Dowling is a friend that I met when I was an admin at NYC Five Borough. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute! You just said earlier that you don't have friends. Didn't he say that, Herman? Lauren? Yeah, you see Lauren what I gotta, he doesn't have any friends. You see this crap I got to go through, Tom? <laughs> you know. Can you hear us? I can't. Can you now, hear me? Yes, we can hear, we can hear you. you. Okay, there we go. Yes, yeah. we can We can hear you fine. So, so Tom's, what's, nice, Tom's nice to meet you. And, and it, I think it's wonderful that you have befriended Lawrence. Uh, he, he does have a few friends in life, Paul. Oh, Thank don't you, worry. Tom. Okay. Thank you, Tom. He's got friends. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you too, Paul. Herman, yeah. how are you, brother? I'm good. I'm hanging in there. I can't complain. Good what's, to see you, man. What's good? You are you hanging out? You, you I see you're doing a lot of traveling lately. No, I wish that were the case. I'd rather be out in the Southwest right now. I saw you post some stuff. Well, the reason I was asking, because I saw you post some stuff from the Southwest. And I'm like, Tom's not traveling during COVID, is he? Negative, K. I'm, okay. Uh, okay. I'm basically, I'm on a mission to post an image every day and try to put something positive to it. I got you. I got you. you. Know? That's, try that's to keep, good. keep the mind in, in the right frame set, basically, you know? Okay, that makes a lot of sense because I was like, hey, wait a minute. Hey, Lawrence, just... is this an addiction or what, bro? FPV and drones? Yeah, your FPV stuff. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> dude, 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 dude. He, he quit on you the have no, uh, You have no idea, Tom. You have no <laughs> idea. Do you know one night I actually woke up in the middle of the night and said, that's it. And came over to my computer desk and was like three in the morning over here tinkering and actually fixed the issue because I it was so obsessed with it. I'm what they call an obsessive thinker. So I think in my sleep. And I woke up and found what the solution was and went straight to it and had the bird flying by morning. But Cut yes. from the same cloth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 drones, period. Yeah, it's my drones. mind doesn't shut off. But my my issue is right now I have to um yeah I, I have bad ins I have bad insomnia I don't like yeah. my wife I so hate on her <laughs> this is a true story this is a true story Tom we were watching we were watching something and eleven o'clock Seinfeld would come on mm -hmm. right or or after the news right eleven o'clock after ten o'clock news Seinfeld would come on eleven on channel eleven mm -hmm. so she's laying in bed and she's she's like wake me when the show comes on dude a commercial came on and she was snoring in right. a commercial I, I, well you know that's why they live longer than us right <laughs> uh no no not at all not at all my wife can sleep through anything bro they sleep, sleep longer through than, anything they sleep longer than we do and more than we do they like very yeah, true they, they get true. it in that that is very very true so what are you doing these days, man? How how you how how are you holding up during during these times? I mean, you're Actually, here in New York with us. Yeah, been working from home since uh, March 18th. Okay. Uh, still still on the job. I think uh, this will be it. This year is going to be it for me. So. Oh, you you you're talking about retiring? Yeah, 40 years, 40 years oh, wow. on the job. So I think it's time, man. And, okay. Uh, we want to get back out. We were going to go out to uh, the Vegas area because we got a place out there August 1st through the 15th, and I was going to work from out there, but uh, they're in bad shape out there now. So right. we'll, 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 we'll stand tight for now. You know? Oh, I hear you. I hear you. Well, right now, there's not a whole lot of moving around the country. Everyone's waiting for something to die down. And if you notice, it's slowly getting coming. The country is slowly engulfing New York. Yeah, exactly. The Northeast is the only section that's uh, doing 
doing okay right now, but that's going to change very soon. So yeah. you know, we'll stick it out and just uh, running a team of people on the job remotely and, you know, got some people on site, just trying to make things work and, you know, uh, ingesting a lot of YouTube, uh, oh, yeah. keeping up to speed on things <laughs> and uh, get trying to get out occasionally, you know, socially distance and go fly someplace. Uh, but even trying to get over to Flushing Meadows these days, you can't get near the joint. I mean, Why? you know, cars are three deep over there now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, coming home from Calvert Vox today, Justin and I, you know, I live out in Queens and yeah. Reese Beach, which has a 3000 car parking lot. The cars start lining up across the bridge. Wow. Just to get in. Now, you know, the end of Flatbush, yeah. if you're familiar yeah. with that area, it goes... Sure. To, to Breezy Point and then to right. Reese Beach. To Reese. Mm -hmm. Halfway across the bridge, we started running into slow traffic. Now, last weekend, we had to pass Flatbush. We had to pass, pass Crossway Boulevard, and we had to come in through past Kennedy Airport. Oh, Jeez. come back around the other way back yes. into the Rockaway. Yes, yeah. because it was an extra yeah. 15 minutes. And we right. still it still took us almost 40 minutes to get from JFK International Airport just to five towns, which is like the main hub over there. Everybody's got cabin fever. That's the problem. They got to get out. You know, that's that's what it is right now. We, we've been taking drives on the weekend. We hit upstate a, a few times. We just taking day trips. That's all. Just trying to okay. find some scenic spots. Grab the camera, grab uh, one of the Mavics, maybe the Phantom. But the Phantom batteries now is starting to puff on me, too. Get out of so. here. I'm in. I'm into my my what uh, eighth battery on. Uh, I've gone through eight batteries on the Mavic Two Pro. Okay. So wow, you know, and and, and, and I that, got that. That's that, that's a piece of change in itself. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, replacing batteries for that. You're one hundred percent right. Yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, no problem with design, no problem with the supply chain from DJI, right? It's got to be all off world stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you it's know, it's got to be deal. us, man. Can't be them. Can't be no, them. first they tell you it's the display monitor you're using. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's got to be something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, Trust what, me. What kind of uh, device are you using? Well, you know, using the Mavic 2 Pro, uh, I think I went through. My my oldest battery maybe had 80 cycles on it. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And it started to puff. I mean, now that you have to put a strap around the belly of your uh, drone just to make sure it doesn't come a lot flying of out of the air on you. A lot of people are using racing drone straps. Yeah, to exactly. Put around it, to, to put yep. it with silicone to put so it they on don't the drone pop. to make just sure the to, batteries don't pop well, out. Just to hope that the contacts stay connected, right? That's sad. Of uh, once those latches go, the bird falls and the battery follows right behind. That's the yeah. The Phantom battery can't come out. No, the Phantom battery can't come out. But you know what, Herman? The other day, kind of hot out there, flew the battery. I cycled them properly. Come on, I've been doing this a long time. I couldn't get the Phantom battery out of the drone. Because it was swollen. You got to let it cool down. I had to let it cool down. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I had to let it cool down. Okay, now that that's the big drawback today is the battery technology. Mm -hmm. Once they once they can improve upon that, forget about it. All bets are off at that point. Well, I I I, I don't know if, if you would agree with me or not, but there are a few people in New York that don't need to fly more than twenty seven minutes. <laughs> There's a few people in New York who shouldn't be flying, is what you really mean, but. Uh, I was trying to be. I was trying I to be know. nice. I was trying, trying to be, be nice about it. Lawrence. Here we go. Broken arm. Broken arm. Finally got it apart. So. Put some tape on it. Let's see what it is. Put some tape this, on it. Herman says. You know what it is. This is sentimental. Sentimental to me because this was my first drone I ever soldered and wired. Of course, I gave it to Justin and he cleaned it up. See a couple of solder spots, but. I, I soldered everything properly. I powered it up and it didn't catch fire. The first one didn't catch fire. <laughs> so even though I don't fly it much, it's sentimental. And then when I did start flying it, I broke an arm. 
So now I can complete that break and she's done. There you go. There was the first that was the first one that you sorted everything up and started up and it didn't catch on fire. Yeah, yeah. You, that's a big thing with FPV. That's why there you go. Know, Fly Natural fire. just sent you four ninety nine. Oh, Frozenfeld, oh, thank you very much, there man. Highly appreciated. Keep it up. Keep working out. There you go. <laughs> I appreciate it. But, Tom, I wanted you to have you on because you always come by and show love to us. You live here in New York. You know. Yes, that's the um, Tyro 99. It's the Tyro 99. They have a 79, a 99, and a 129. And the model number is actually how much the drone costs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so to spend a hundred dollars and it actually fly, it, that that's that's almost amazing. Even though it took me a while, but I, I like I was saying, I wanted to have you on because you know you come by, you show support, and and like I said, you're from New York. Well, you and, know you got to get some blue wrench, right? We haven't talked in a while. No, it's been a while. Yeah, tight, lit. right. I have to give you a blue wrench, man, because supposedly that's the only way. You're supposed to get one on here now. <laughs> yeah, last I, time I saw, I saw you and Herman. I think was at Calvert. Was it? That's a possibility. Yeah, yeah I think that, that was the last time, Herman. That was a possibility, Herman. That was a very strong possibility because wasn't NYC having the meetup? I think it was. Yeah, I I think it was Eduardo was having. Yes, yes. Put the he, meetup he's, together. He's one of the admins for um, yeah. NYC. Yeah. He's Oops. a good kid. Five, five borough. Well, all I know is he means well. Yes, everyone every, everyone does mean well for the well, most I, part. I. I <laughs> remember you're making it, you're making it real hard people, here. i am from new york city okay you're making it real so, hard here for me tom to, to keep it real <laughs> it's hard when you put three guys from the city together i mean poor paul's at risk here okay yeah right? yeah right okay. Don't worry about it, paul. what are you doing paul you shopping on amazon i'm looking you know what paul <laughs> What's that? Well, the funny the, shopping on Amazon the other day. The funny thing is, my uh, wife has gotten very savvy with Amazon and Bloomingdale's and J. Crew, and it's like you know, I have a, 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 I'm running a postal service here now. <laughs> I got deliveries coming in every day. Dude, we have we have tenants on the on the second floor in the house here. She moved in with Amazon. When I see home with Amazon from the time she's moved in to present day, at least every other day at a minimum. Oh, Tom, put your YouTube link. JSK wants. Yeah, put your, your YouTube link. JSK wants to, wants to um, support you. We support each other's channels. And she gets boxes to the point where Amazon comes to the house maybe sometimes twice a day, three times a day. <laughs> And it's for her. And we're not talking about the first floor and us, our house. So they they, they just love us on this block. That's Seriously. Paul, you all right, man? Like yeah, 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 yeah. Just reading chat and listening to three solid New Yorkers talking. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, there's no mistaking my accent, Paul. That's for sure. I, I think I think Justin. <laughs> Justin took shot in the drop literally because he just went out of his chair. I don't know. Hey, hey, he went hey, to hey. get his shot, I guess, and never came back. I don't know. I don't know what happened. All right. This is great. I didn't have to. This is really good. I didn't have to take the, the whole thing apart just to put this arm on. So you got her back together now? I have one more screw in because the other two went in very easy. This one's going to be a bitch. <laughs> it's Murphy's law. Murphy gets a lot of laughs at my expense. Well, loosen, loosen the other two screws. There you go, JSK guys. If you want to support Tom, he's a great videographer, also a 107 pilot here in New York, and an all-out genuine person. There are very few people that I've met from the time I started flying that I can say until now that haven't changed. Tom hasn't changed. Appreciate that, Lawrence. It's it's the truth, though. 
and I know you see a lot of shit going on. <laughs> well, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. I, and, 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 and doing Tom this on the public neutral, safety side. Tom also. is a neutral man. The world could be blowing up around him as long as it doesn't come near him and his drone. <laughs> that's, that's very true. I can hey, stay Tom, focused. Tom, what, well, is yeah. it, what is it that you do, Tom? I'm, uh, I'm in the New York City Fire Department for 40 years now. Congratulations, and thank you for your outstanding service. I know, especially now, it's not the easiest position to hold. Uh, they, uh, the youngsters out there are uh, doing their best, and, you know, it's a tough world they're, they're yep. dealing with right now. Yep. And uh, I'm doing everything I can on my side to uh, support them, keep right. them running. I, I basically uh, am a, a bureau chief that runs technologies now, so drones is one of the things that I'm involved with on the job. Good. Uh, so that keeps the interest peaked. Thermal but, imaging uh, and all the good stuff, right? Well, you know what, we, we, we really have uh, used the technology to our advantage and it has made a big difference on the job. So, you know what, it, it's a different point of view we can get when we're running roof operations, we have uh, members up on the roof in a dangerous situation. Now with something as cheap as a, a Mavic 2 dual, Enterprise yep. dual, yep. We, we can keep thermal and visual on them and uh it's already uh saved a few rear ends i gotta tell you that so um, it's know, made a big difference so i want to ask you a question because i meant you, you just mentioned the uh enterprise duel um so apparently the uh that whole ban or the cry from the federal government on the uh ban on, on chinese made drones hasn't trickled down to the state yet well uh, actually it has it actually has? it has because okay. you got to realize here in New York City, we get a lot of federal money. We get a lot of grant money, right? We also run a, a, a nationwide incident management team because we, we run such big operations in the city mm -hmm. that the feds use us and send us elsewhere in the, in the U.S. to run large-scale incidents. Like wildfires on the West Coast will come in, set up a tent city. We won't actually fight those fires, but we'll run the back office operations. And uh, we get a lot of grant money, so yeah, we can't we can't spend a dollar on uh, Chinese product anymore. Wow! And that that's uh, that, that's that's pretty limiting, you know. We I tell you the the Enterprise Dual is the wonderful tool, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with thirty five hundred all in, then you add a Crystal Sky monitor for another grand, uh, you're you're in business. But uh, you know, can't touch them now. Can't touch right. them. But Recovery One says you should come out to California and teach these guys how to. How to well, see, that's here. I, well, no, I'll tell you, uh, you know what? We, we were involved with uh, the National Institute of Science and Technology oh, fuck. down in Maryland. Uh, NIST uh, uh -huh. helped, helped work with them and put together a great training course out there. But we, there's departments from all over the country, you know, and, and look, it's a lot easier for us mm -hmm. to fly than it is for law enforcement to fly because you got a lot of privacy issues, a lot of, you know, uh, constitutional rights issues involved in law enforcement and the use of drones. Hey, Tom, who's going to say no to a fireman? Well, well, the thing is, remember, they never mind when we show up. Okay. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Know, but that, that's uh, exactly my point. I mean, yeah. But you, who's going to say no to a fireman? I mean, look, if I need to send a drone up now to watch my men, you don't have to. You, I don't have to ask you your permission to do it. <laughs> no, we're, we're we're there for safety reasons. That's why we're there, right? We're we're there to 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 help people, get people out. You know, hey, look, here's how you know the big difference between our job and NYPD's job. Uh, fire will will always tell you how many years they have on the job and people in NYPD will tell you how many years they have left on the job. Okay. <laughs> so it's a big difference. There. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. Okay. Big difference. Yeah. That, that, uh, that. But you know what? It, it's uh, I'm a geek. So uh, being able to play with that stuff, uh, being able to, you know, I'm like the senior technical advisor for the uh, robotics team. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just toys, man. It's uh, toys. The big kid, Big kids, basically. You I know? call so, them big boy oh, toys. Tom, well, they're big, big boy and girl toys now. There, Lawrence, come yeah, on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, bro. Careful. Yes, well, Tom, this is true. This Lawrence, is true. What's up, Logan? Know, 
I was telling Lawrence that with that um with that 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 Matrice 300 that that DJI released with this whole Chinese band, that thing is such a beautiful piece of tech that we may never know. Because yeah, we can't touch it. Um, yeah, we yeah, can't touch it. People who really need to use it won't use it because of this this band. And well, you know what we we have the the Matrice the M210 RTK. Uh-huh. And that is they a beautiful kill our guys in San Bernardino, okay. matter. No matter uh, but, what, small or big. But uh, you know, with a with a thirty power zoom, and that XT2 thermal imaging camera, those things are amazing. Uh, but yeah, it, it's uh, can't touch the M300. We can't. Uh, we don't have the money for it. And and believe me, in New York City, we don't have a dime to scratch together these days. Okay. Yeah. So. So you're tough. able to still fly what you got. You just can't replace it. Is that right? Yeah, we're actually using third-party software. Okay. Uh, so we basically wrap everything around oh. and, you know, we're using other solutions. We don't use DJI's applications. So that's that's where we can separate the two. Nothing's going back to the homeland, so to speak. Uh, but still, you know, look at the Department of the Interior with the thousands and thousands of devices they have, they can't even fly them now. Okay, yeah. they're sitting, and, and that's a they're shame. Sitting in that's the a warehouse. Shame. Yeah, it's, and and you know they do great work, and people don't realize. I mean, interesting you know, selling. I'm buying. Yeah, if only that were the case, right? If only that were the case. But you know, look, they 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 do land surveys, they do searches, they do cattle cattle counts, they do all that kind of stuff, and. And they're not doing any of that stuff right now. And that's sad because that's definitely going to impact us. Okay. Right. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's really tough. And, and the smaller departments, think about it. The smaller departments can't afford to spend their own money. So they count on the feds with the grant money. And right. now, you know, what choices do they have? I mean, what's the latest thing that just came out? What was this? What was the Skydio just came out with the thermal imaging? Well, they announced it. Yeah. Well, if you look at that, it's, uh, it's what almost three times the price. Yes, yeah. just the, like that. A new Anafi is like yeah, seven yeah. or eight thousand dollars. Well, Anafi, it, and, Anafi announced they're not making any more commercial grade. I mean, no more consumer. No more consumer. Drones. They're going right. straight commercial. Yeah. I mean, think yeah. about it. They went from a drone that was eight nine hundred dollars to a seven thousand dollar drone. That's a hell of a profit. Now, I I found that to be pretty. I I I thought the introduction of that was pretty comical because it was all about how it's built in the united states but, but all chinese the advertising parts. and everything was from france yeah there's, there's a bunch, bunch of chinese parts in it well uh, there's hardly anything we're using today herman that doesn't have uh and i some, totally understand some components that. in them right i totally understand that but my thing about the whole needing to be u.s made i mean i, I you know that's like bullying like what, develop your own tech hey how you doing well it, it's hard to develop your own tech when you don't provide the stem education in the country <laughs> yeah to support yep. it right i agree with you ten thousand percent this is where i'm that. going with this tom how are you justin good how you doing good good yeah the other yeah. thing tom too is that new enough the the other thing that they just kind of glazed over was all of the data is going to be stored in France, not in the United States, even That's though it's correct. assembled here. In an yeah. ally country. Yeah, uh, today ally, they are, but yes. still, okay. still we don't have the security over it. No, and that, that's problematic, right? And, and I mean, any of these solutions have to have a solution for the public sector to yeah. where you can break that link. Well, come okay? December, it won't matter anyway because Justin, it'll be just on a replace the on. Wi-Fi feed. So anybody that's yeah. stealing will be able to take get your information. Look, look, it doesn't matter. You know, people talk about, oh, I'm going to fly somebody else's drone, so I, I can fly is... anywhere, and they and they can't see me. Yeah, that, that's, that's not awesome. true. I mean, if you have an RF signal going from one to the other, we can find you. Listen, <laughs> okay? listen, Tom, let them keep doing what they're doing. They're just they're just taking documentation down, so when they do hit you. You don't. You can't say this wasn't me. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. Well, look, simple. look. Who's got a lecture at home? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I Those mean, guys. they're listening to us all the time. All <laughs> of them guys over there. You know, there, there's 
there's hardly a bit of information that doesn't that's not in somebody else's pocket today. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. scary, okay? Being in technologies and seeing the cybersecurity alerts that come out on a daily basis, you just want to jump off a cliff at this point. Well, well yeah, yeah, I mean okay? I mean the government can access your cell phone in your pocket and listen to what you're doing while you're walking down the street. And, and those are supposed to be the good guys, Paul, right? What about yep. the bad actors out yeah, there? Exactly. Right? Okay. Right. Yeah. You know, and is. there's a lot of there's a lot of state sponsored stuff out there with those bad actors too. So, yep. you know, this data that they're collecting on us every day is getting into a lot of people's well, hands well, and data, a lot of people you wouldn't want to get in bed with. Data right. collection goes to the level of even you can go to your local post office and get the, the mailing address along with cell phone numbers or phone numbers from all the Democrats in your neighborhood. You can oh, do yeah. it from all the liberals. You can get that information from your post office. Lawrence, you pay I told a small you. fee and you get a whole mailing list. Lawrence, yep. I told you my phone rings every day. The house right. phone? And he doesn't I give the number out. I have never given the number out. Yep. <laughs> Not even a family. Hey, Herman, we got job phones that are protected in a mobile device management system <laughs> that we get spam calls on. Okay. <laughs> so, That's funny. Uh, I, I got a call from a lost dog company and they left a message on my answering machine for my house number, which I never give out any, to anyone. They said, oh, we, we know you live in the area. We just wanted to see if you could check under your porch or in the garage to see if there's a dog in there. And I'm like, how'd you get this number? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. think about it. I, I mean, the ring device, right? Yeah. You know, you have a doorbell device. You have, I have one on my back, on my garage with the spotlights on it. Yeah. That video's in the cloud. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That video's yeah. in the cloud. And, you know, the, the, the scary thing is if somebody wants to keep an eye on you, well, now they can it's look at your front hard. door. It's yeah. not hard. Yeah. So you got to do everything the old fashioned way, Lawrence. Like I said, or motion sensors and time clocks and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, the only one of the drones I wished I had not sold, and I only sold it because it didn't at the time work with the uh, smart controller, was the Enterprise Duo. Yeah, that it, it, it. You know what? It's very nimble. It's we can put them up quickly. Uh, the thermal imaging is very, very low resolution. But yep. what's nice about it is the ability that you have to superimpose that visual image on top of the thermal image, right. now you can actually see what you're looking at instead Online. of seeing blobs yep. of color. Yep, yep. Okay? Exactly. Yep. And, and, you know, it, it makes a big difference. Uh, it, it's, you know, there's a lot of roofing companies out there, a lot of insurance adjusters out there that right. got their hands on those. Yeah. And, you know, if you're in the roofing business, that's a great idea. Right? Yeah. I mean, you know, yep. you, you can actually show the customer what kind of thermal capability their current roof has and sure. then when you do the replacement now you can show them what the difference is right the before my, my and first after thermal imaging oh. camera was uh i had bought one of the expensive flares for my inspire one and uh because i used by the to, way I by the to, way expensive and flia go together paul yes exactly yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, yeah but i used to i used to volunteer in southeast michigan to go out and do search and rescue stuff so they call me up but now everybody's got funding. <laughs> yeah. And so after I bought the camera, I did maybe two times I went out and volunteered because I wasn't getting paid. And then all of a sudden my, my phone stopped ringing. So I said, well, I better sell this thing. And I paid like $9,000 for it. When I sold it like four months later, I got $3,500 for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. The, you yeah. know, yeah, that's the market. Look, the, the, out in the Southwest with all the uh, solar farms and all the thermal farms out there, yeah. The solar farms, it's a great tool to use because you fly yourself, you know, you use a product like Litchi and you fly yourself a patent, set up a grid, and then you turn that data over to, you know, with PIX4D, you turn that data over yeah. to the power company. You know, what would take normally uh, two inspectors approximately six weeks, you can do with about six batteries in a single yeah. day. Yeah. And, and then they're calling you back just to survey the the panels they've changed out because you're basically looking for those anomalies right. in that heat signature yeah yeah you know 
Uh, the thermal farms are a different issue, though. Uh, the thermal farms you don't want to fly over because you'll uh, you'll burn that bird up in a heartbeat. There's a thermal farm in outside of Prim, Nevada, right on the California border. And we were down there one day, and because, of course, there's a casino right at the very tip right there on the border uh, and, and an outlet mall. So, you know, the wife had, had me driving there. And then across <laughs> the road, I saw what looked like a big mirage, a big lake. It turned out to be a thermal farm where they they oh, basically you know. have a, a water boiler up in the up on a high tower and they have these mirrors that articulate and they beam the sun up at this thing. It heats up the water and that spins a turbine and it generates electricity. Well, the problem is the uh, the conservationists in the area say it's also responsible for killing tens of thousands of birds a year. Blinding yeah. them by blinding. Well, no, no, actually frying Ooh, them in the air. Oh, okay. from inside. Uh, yeah. And yeah, what's deep. really funny is there's a Kentucky Fried Chicken right there at Prim, <laughs> right at the border, right there. So you gotta wonder. You gotta wonder whether that was. Well, either that, either that, 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 or the wildlife down below bird. says, "I get the next one. I get the next one." <laughs> well, it all depends on what what kind of bird is in the area. Yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you, man. There's some big. Big birds down there, okay? Because uh, pigeon is too small to pass no, off. No, 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 uh, it, no. It's <laughs> funny because I had taken the wife to Bryce Canyon, and uh, I, you know, we we had made one of the scenic stops, and while I was photographing, this blackbird came over, and and she thought it was cute, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden she goes to feed, and I said, "Don't feed the birds," and. She was sitting in the car and she threw something out the window and the bird came over. Uh -huh. She didn't realize how large it was. It was right. looking in the window at her. And okay. then we drove about about six <laughs> miles away to the stop. Was it good? The hell was that? And, a turkey vulture? <laughs> and he was right there with us. No, yeah. you're talking about these 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 ravens are enormous out there. Well, you know okay? what? It's funny about that time when I was trying to tell Lawrence, I was like, you know, with this whole coronavirus and people not really being out and a lot of places not really being open. The seagulls out by the beaches here, especially in Coney Island and then Rockaway, with them not being able to eat from people who drop garbage. They're getting they're aggressive, huh? Aggressive now, yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, and the, and the last time I was out there to fly with Lawrence, I had <laughs> two birds that just, every time I went to the right, they were like, oh, there he goes, let's get him. <laughs> there he goes, let's get him. Hey, hey, Lawrence, if you really want to test your FPV skills, how about smearing a little bit of tuna fish on one of those FPV birds? <laughs> okay? Yeah, really, uh, then, just then rub I'll it be, in. Just rub the, the oil in the, in the yeah, that's all. Yeah, rub it on. Yeah, then I'll be flying for my life. <laughs> uh, that's it, man. That's when you fly your best, I heard. Yeah. Okay? Fly it like it's your last flight. Yep, that's right. Good deal, that's off right. axis. I'd like to see. I'd like to see the video of that. But you know, <laughs> you know what, Tom? The, the FPV thing is 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 a hell of a lot cheaper than trying to fix a DJI bird. Well, look at it this way. Uh, okay, there's always trades off in life, right? That's yes. what life is, right? Yep. So, uh, you spend what about? 80% of your time tinkering and 20% yeah. flying. Yes. So um, there's the trade off right there. Not anymore. Okay. Not anymore. Right now, after repairing this one, I can say everything here flies. Lawrence, I can guarantee you, you have <laughs> spent more money than I have in repair. Yeah. Yeah. How oh, many arms? Have, how many arms have you had to fix, uh, Herman? <laughs> <laughs> Me? None. Yeah. Yeah. How, how many? How many trees have you landed in? None. Well, How many poles have you hit? The drone bounced off the tree and hit me, but none. <laughs> how, many, how many light poles did you hit? None. <laughs> you know, you when you first thought flying FTV, hey, you Lawrence, you want us to go on any, anymore? What happened? Did we make the point or do we need to continue on? Okay, I get it. Four <laughs> drones. I, I really daily. think that even, even if he went in five to ten years deep, he would still spend more in repairs than he would with a DJI drone. He probably with a drone, period, because you're talking about one year of manufacturer's warranty, right? Yeah. So they would cover repairs right there. Right. Now, anything that you smash up, the care refresh would cover right there. 
<laughs> True. Uh, actually, they, they started doing that now. <laughs> well, you know what? When when the air unit came out, I was very interested, but I really didn't want to dive into uh, building my own bird at that point. You know, I I'm I'm in it. You know, unlike you, Justin, unlike you, Lawrence. You know, I, and I know you guys still look for the photography end of it from time to time too. But that's that's my big edge, right? That's that's yeah. what I really like to do is the cinematography, the photography end of it. And right. and I I look, I would love an FPV bird built, purpose built for me, <clears throat> something I can come over those mountain ridges, out in Red Rock and zoom down in those canyons. And I, I I'm I'm thirsting for that. We I really am. I mean, we got a guy you know. Chef. So what's going to happen when DJI comes out with Red it? Rock? Well, you know what? I might be out a few bucks, Justin, right? When DJI does come out, you know? That's the problem. These, You know, I, I, you know, I, I turned into a damn fanboy at 60 years old, dude. It's uh, it's pretty bad, you know? It's pretty bad, bro. bro. I'm dying to you, see when DJI comes out with this FBB bird. How you know, like uh, I think it. Lawrence was saying that, you know, as long as it has position holding GPS, I might do okay. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 but the, the thing, to be honest, my my objective, Tom, was to learn how to fly FPV and combine the both. Absolutely, like yeah. FPV yeah. with camera drawn, but be, yeah. you can't combine shaky footage with rock steady footage. No. So no. now that I'm starting to smooth my stuff out and get birds tuned, like this bird is tuned, this one's tuned, this one I'm working on, that's tuned. Everything else here is tuned except for this one and this little one here, basically. You know who dived in pretty heavy and, and, and got pretty good pretty quick was uh, Ken Dono. Yeah. He, yeah. He's using it for real estate. Well, Tom, Tom, yes, he did. And he's already using them for real estate, but it helps to have deeper pockets. Oh, you, you, well, when, yeah, when especially you can, when you can write off your losses, right? It, that's yeah. what I'm, that's that's what I'm right getting there. at. That's and when you're also on. a sponsored pilot. Yes. The company yes. send you. Absolutely. That's, Absolutely. What I'm, that's what I'm getting at. It makes things a lot easier. But he did learn how to fly incredibly fast. Yeah, yeah. he did. He did. he did. Well, you know what? Uh, you know, it's like anything else. You put the effort into it. You know, it. it, it it's not a, a, a lot of things are out of the box these days. OK. And, you know, been, I've been flying for a while, but, you know, people picking up a a Mavic Air 2 today think they're pros within a matter of two batteries. Okay. I, I uh, know. We see it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. We see it all the time, especially, well, she's back together. There you all go. Right. Ready to go. Tomorrow, well, Tom, I will Tom, take... were you out there the day that uh, I keep bringing up because I think it's one of the funniest stories when they were flying in the park and some guy showed up all puffed up. He had his new, 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 uh, new uh, Phantom. And everybody was flying, and he was watching somebody else. Oh, Tom, else he's talking face. about we What's had a meetup at Francis Lewis, and the guy lost his Phantom for a pro in the water. I oh, don't know I'm not he... sure I was at that one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't you know, know what, Paul? That, that happened just about at every five borough meet. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> and, and the part that I found was funny was is he <laughs> didn't realize that everybody's yelling. <laughs> Who's the views and opinions the that are heard tonight are not necessarily the views and opinions of you everyone see, in the panel and or in the chat. You see, <laughs> that, uh, you know, that goes double for me, bro. Like, you, you see, this is <laughs> a thing to see now. A lot of things get exposed. There was times where inspires didn't come back. Oh, uh, yes. that's, when, that's when you better have deep pockets because it's yep. not just the Inspire, it's the camera. You you remember that day? That no, day. we were flying at Bush Terminal that day and an Inspire went out and didn't come back. Yeah. And, and what was funny, when it happened, the guy who lost the Inspire and who was with him was trying to, to play it off cool, like, like nothing happened. Oh, don't worry, it'll be back soon. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then he sat in his car and cried, right? I would have yeah. cried. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Be yeah, you better soon. believe it. Especially <laughs> when the Inspire Ones only had a 15 to 18 minute flight time and he's still sitting there after 45 <laughs> minutes. Where are you? <laughs> Coming back. Well, well that's why that's why a lot of us when we first started flying over water, we were flying over Meadow Lake. That's only four feet deep, the entire lake. Okay. So if you had to, okay, <laughs> I'm waiting in. But, uh, 
Yeah, you take off from Bush Terminal and you hit that harbor, you're not uh, recovering that drone. That's for yeah. sure. That 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 trip is fun at night. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's nice and dark out there, and you got to yeah. rely on whatever you can see and your instrument panels. Well, you know, half the battle is uh, not not doing your pre-flight, right? How many times uh, have people oh, had? Yeah. You Close forget to change. Because... Very important. <laughs> you forget to change yeah. something as simple as the white balance. On white your balance. Drone. Your your return to home altitude. Okay, <laughs> you, you got a ninety foot return to home altitude, and you got twenty story buildings all around you. Yeah, uh, you're gonna have a problem. You're gonna have a problem. Yeah, that's true. You know? and, and you know, look, it, it's like anything else. The first thing. Or I should say the last thing that ever comes out of the box or is the owner's manual. Okay? Because <laughs> we have a society today yeah, that never true. reads it. And then you have a group of people that, look, uh, you know, this is a good good area um, to be in if you're a sponge. If you can go up to YouTube and ingest content from YouTube, you can right, learn but, just about but anything. But you got to right? be able to just decipher the, the crap from the real yes, stuff. Yes, the BS JSK from the... JSK was asking, stuff. were there any flight restrictions for us today? Yeah, it started at 3.45, I believe. Yeah, yeah, this afternoon. We, we were flying, we were we up at yeah. 9 a.m. in the morning, we were flying. Yes, we heard, We get out early. Justin and I, we, we have to get out early because everyone's going stir crazy. And since we're at stage four, of reopening New York, people are just using an excuse to act a fool and, and and bunch up. Because they showed Asbury Park yesterday, Asbury Beach yesterday, thousands upon thousands of they look like they look like um like seals spread out across the freaking the, the sand because there were that many people. And yeah. the same thing was expected today at Coney Island because the weather was expected to hit um to feel like 105. Right. And and you know what? We drove through Long Island City today. We went out, the wife and I, and we uh, ordered uh, some Jackson Hole burgers. And Paul, oh, oh, sweet. if you're ever in the New York area, Jackson Hole burgers, oh, unbelievable. Yes. unbelievable. Yes. And Tom, you okay. can concur with this. They have every possible topping you could think of on a hamburger. And if you can come up with a topping that they don't have, they'll put it on their menu. They will figure it out for you. Yep. And we've been, you know, we, we I hit them up on... Uh, online ordered drove over there we picked it up we and of course i had bought us bought the wife and i two uh, car tables so we can sit in the car and eat comfortably okay oh, and uh so of course on amazon and uh mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we took a drive down towards astoria park over to you know the hunters point area you talk about wall to wall people everywhere and of course you know uh, regardless of your political views, I'm a believer that once you politicize the pandemic, we're all done. Okay. But a lot of people not wearing masks, a lot of Hugging people not each other. distancing. Yep. And, and it was like, we wouldn't get out of the car at that point. I mean, I don't blame you. Know. You. you were yeah. smart enough to stay in the yeah. damn car. Yeah. So, you know, look, like I said, people have cabin fever, right? Uh, that's the problem. And well, uh, I, yeah. in my mind, Tom, I just keep asking myself, was I that young and dumb at one time? Maybe I was, but I don't remember, you know? So, so let's realize something, okay? The generation before us, boy, what sacrifices they made in life, right? Yeah. We were, our generation, we were a bunch of dummies. We were handed a lot, okay? But we gave birth to a, even stupider dummies, yep. okay? <laughs> and, and that's, that's who's... That's who's roaming the earth right now and making decisions, okay? So, you know what? It, it's uh, it's a scary world out there, and uh, I'm just hoping we don't do ourselves in, you know? Because I still have money to spend on some more drones. Come on. Yep. <laughs> There's still some more toys I want to play with. And, and Justin, you'll get a kick out of this. Uh, Anthony had had picked up some really big uh, RC car. I forget the name. Uh, I remember the Kraken something, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. So what we were thinking was, why don't we buy some air units from DJI, mount them yeah, on top of on those, <laughs> FPV, and then each one of us gets a team member that throws a drone up as our spotter. And, and chases it. 
and chases it as we do a road race. And yeah. guess what? That that Flushing Meadow Circle would be a great course. It would be a great yeah. track. I, yeah, I, I, I drove yeah. my truck there, and it's it's fun. Yeah, there's plenty, there's plenty but, of room. But we could have. I, I remember the days as a as a kid where we used to have the slot car races and stuff like that. Yeah. AFX, okay. AFX yeah. cars. And, yep. and it, it was AFX and Tyco. Tyco, and Tyco. was Tyco was the poor man slot racer. Right. AFX was the real stuff with with the brush cars and stuff like that. I, I remember. Yep. Yeah, I do but, remember. But in this city, that's probably your best bet because you can't put a bird up anywhere in this city. <laughs> you know, that, that's why I'm so glad, Tom. I live out here along the beach because they have a section closed off specifically to people. You can walk in the sand. You cannot set up a towel. You cannot stop. You can't do nothing there because in the evenings and mornings, it's the area where the birds go to rest. Right. You know, so other than flying, like th there's only one aggressive bird. There's a, um, a white bodied bird with a black head and an orange beak during yeah. June and july it gets very aggressive because it's mating season it's mating right but I other thought, than that other than that afterwards I, over afterwards, I thought it, there was a big crazy bird out there that drove a, an atv <laughs> oh blondie <laughs> blondie yeah yeah she's <laughs> blondie yeah, she, she loves her some anthony charles all yes. i do is mention oh. anthony charles and she starts blushing <laughs> tom, tom did uh, did you hear novice's story about they were he was flying at the beach and some other people happened to be walking down the beach and he had a camera and some lady started yelling at him for harassing him with a drone. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Herman and I were flying. What it was, Herman was doing some, some pans from the left to right and, and, and at one altitude along the beach, catching the water scene, you know, the waves coming in. And I went down the beach over the water a couple of times and came back and this, this mother and three kids with an inspiring son, an inspiring photographer for a son, were just walking. And she just started yelling and screaming at them to get that drone away and stop flying that drone near them. <laughs> you know what? It, it, it's pretty funny when people come up to you and say, why are you taking my picture? And I, I look at them and oh, go, yeah. man, I wouldn't take your picture if you paid me. OK? <laughs> That happened to oh, those, those are the people that were in the um the video that I put out the other day. Paul. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, okay. that, was, that was the incident that, that was them. Was talking yes. About. Yeah, yes. Oh, yes and yes. then and then Herman had some lady kept the he was flying, kept bugging him. What you doing? How you doing it? Why you doing it? Where are you that's doing another it? Another time. <laughs> and yeah, well, but that's, on that's, the same beach. Yeah, it, it's like the T-shirt, right? You would wear the T-shirt that says it flies this high, it flies this far, it flies this fast, and no. You no, can't you fly can't. it. No, you can't yeah. f and fly it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, but we get that. You know, we get that on the job too. Okay, it, it's funny. You know, uh, back in the day, we'd pull up to the scene, and we'd get out, and, and and we would just look up. We'd just look up, just for the fun of it. It would didn't even have to be the fire building or anything. We'd just look up, and people would come up and go, "Oh, what's going on? Uh oh, uh oh!" And they'd look up with us, and I call them the uh oh squad, right? <laughs> and we would always say, hey, we're filming a movie. Do you want to be in it? And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, good. Go stand on that corner over there. <laughs> and then, you know, a boss one. would come over and go, what I, are all those I, people doing on that corner? Try that. And we go, yeah, we don't know. That, Tom. Yeah, no <laughs> That's good, Dom. That's very <laughs> slick, Tom. <laughs> yeah, we call them the uh-oh squad. <laughs> <laughs> I have to remember that just for good laughs. I, I, I see you shouldn't have told me nothing like that. <laughs> Look, I, I never mind telling people what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. Okay. Right. In fact, I, I feel if you can, if you can teach somebody a little something, make them more aware. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. They'll be less likely to harass yeah. us in the future. Like we had a guy that was sitting next to us with a dog and we're flying. The guy quietly says, Hey, do you mind if I film you? And I was like, Lawrence is like, no, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was curious. He heard something buzzing over. And I guess this was his first time walking his dog. Maybe it wasn't his first. but Or maybe it was his first time that close to a racing drone. Because one guy that was buzzing us 
hovering around us and stuff like that. He was while me and Justin were setting up and and flying. That would go and fly back over to where the guys were, the AMA field. You know, those guys are a little snooty over there at Calvert Box. But look, I joined the AMA field over in Marine Park, and uh, it was the funniest thing because <laughs> right away they started. You know, I joined, and they said, "Oh, you'll have to be trained by somebody." They're, meanwhile, I've been flying for a while, and 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 not just unmanned, right? And and so. You know, what was funny about it was they said, oh, we have to have this guy, you know, teach you how to fly. OK, and and he's going to be here today. And it shows up. It's Step. Step Cohen. Oh, get out of here. And and it's Step cool. says to them, uh, this is the guy who taught me how to fly. Why, why am I going <laughs> to teach you how to fly? But, you know, it was always, oh, you guys can't do this. You guys can't do that. You guys can't do this. And then five minutes later, it's, hey, could you go fly, find my plane in the woods? Yeah, uh -huh. I, I, you know, I just lost my plane, but it, it got to be where it was. They, they, you know, it, it was a them and us kind of mentality. The club where I was like, it, it didn't make sense paying for it anymore. Yeah. I, I joined a club out in uh, in the Vegas area by Red Rock Canyon, right outside of Red Rock. They have a beautiful little field there and everything. And nicest people you ever want to meet. Nobody, there's no drone police out there. They, they, they're like, what do you got? You know, and oh, and and we. There, there was even a guy at uh, Flushing Meadows because Flushing Meadows was a control line field. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's why it's round, right? Right, and, right. And there was this guy there, and I swear he he had to be in his mid eighties, and he was flying. He was flying control line, and and then well, guess, you know the minute you took off, he was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> well, you know what? The first time we took off, we were all the way on the side, and when he got done flying, he came over. He said, "Hey guys, you know I'm flying," and I said, "Hey, no problem." Hey, what altitude do you fly to? He goes, well, I go up about 90 feet. I said, would you mind if we flew over you at about 150? I, that'd be a great, great little bit of video. And if you have an email address, I can send it to you. Right. He turned out to be one of our best friends after that. He was like, you know, whenever we saw him at the RC field, he was like, oh, you guys get a shot of this plane I just put together. And, you know, it, really, that's what you're looking for. You're looking right. to share, share the sure. experience, basically. Sure. This is true. This is true. But Tom, I, I, I'm glad you got a chance to come on, but it's that magic time. It's actually 701. You know how we do a drop. So we've already made you a moderator, but that's the only way to be, become a moderator with certain exemptions. Um, <laughs> so we're going to end the live stream. Barnes don't do those, Paul. Huh? What we happened? Dropped. You, you don't do a drop. You don't care about how the show gets. Oh, oh, okay. Anyway, Sunday nights with those guys is sponsored by those, those guys. guys. And we appreciate nice you. you. We appreciate Pleasure you very Paul. much. You. Don't forget to check out Paul. Monday nights, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Phantom Flight 101. Wednesday nights, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Geeks Vana at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesdays. Damn, the week is getting full. But anyway, <laughs> thanks a lot, everyone. Everyone have a good night. Thank hey, you very much. Hey, hey, thanks for having have... me, gentlemen. Thank you find so much. Everybody take Val's care. Life, or Val's channel. Yeah, she's interviewing yeah, Val's Captain. On... She's interviewing Stevie from the Bronx. Yep. Yeah.